Hello and welcome everyone to IELTS Writing Task 1 series. In this video course, you are going to learn how to write multiple charts question. Alright, now before, let's have a look at an outline that you are going to learn in this video course. First, I'm going to teach you about how to approach the question. So, you are going to learn to understand the actual question how to approach it. Second, I'm going to explain the selecting the key features when it comes to writing multiple charts question. And then you will have some ideas of how to write an overview and finally I'll give my own suggestion what you should do next step. Alright, now let's begin with understanding the question. So, in this video course, I decided to give you more question rather than more an explanatory method. So, I want you to have a look at the question on the right screen and find out what is the actual topic, the main topic of these two charts illustrate. So, think about it. You can pause your screen and answer the question, what do the diagrams actually show? And that is going to be your answer for introduction, because introduction's purpose is to describe what is the overall picture, overall the uh, shown and illustrated in the picture. That is the first thing. Alright, so now I'm going to explain. So basically, there are two charts. One is a bar chart, another is pie chart, which is below, and they both represent general idea about transport traveling. So the bar chart shows uh, the reasons, various reasons, and the the main drivers, main triggers for people to travel. So that is the first bar chart's illustration. On the other hand, the, the pie chart actually shows you the problems that people, the public, come across while they are traveling. But they all focus it on one single topic, where one is reasons for travel and the problems while traveling. Alright, that is going to be your introduction. And if you don't know, if you don't have a rubric, you can just guess from that. So the reason why I asked, the, I asked this question is because you must have a general idea about the question first of all. So this is the first thing you should do when you come across about any charts related questions. First thing you should try to understand the question, what it shows, what it actually means. That's the first and most important part. Secondly, you must ask another question. Is it comparative questions or comparison question or trends? So those of you who are not familiar with what trends means, I will really recommend you to watch previous videos about line graph and trends where I've explained it in more detail. But those of you who are not very sure, briefly I can say the trends is the change over a period of time while the comparison is where there is no timeline is given, you just have to compare different data with each other. So, what do you think in this situation? Well, in this question it is just a comparison. Why? Because there is no timeline is given. So trend means there should be some time. Some the change over time should be given, like 2007, 2008, and 9. Some kind of data about the dates should be given. But in this situation, we don't know which and what time is the whole thing is happening. So in that case, it is just comparison. Sometimes the question is going to be only the trends, like you will be given only one single data changes and the timelines. Um, but in this situation, you will have only comparative comparison information given where you don't know what is the time is, when it happens. And sometimes it's going to be both of it, like you will have both comparison and at the same time change over period of time. 
All right, now this is the second thing that you need to make sure. Is it a comparison or trends? So let's say you have found, you have got idea uh, whether it is comparison or the trends. Now, third thing that you need to make sure is what tense you should write the whole essay. So what I mean, it's a grammar. So depending on types of question, there could be different tense. Simple and general rule is that if you have got trends, then you must have some sort of tense, either past simple, if it's happened in the previous years, or the present and the future, like current and future projection, or sometimes combination of past, present and the future. So, but reminder, it is only applicable if there is a the trend is given. But what will happen if there is no trend, just like in this example? If there is no trend is given, in that case, there is no time. So we don't know what time has happened. And if there is no time, the default. What I mean, default means the, the grammar tense, which you should select automatically, is present simple. Why? Because present simple has nothing to do with the time. It is actually... Um, indefinite timeline so you can like if you watch the videos and instructions or if you've been sitting in the lectures in physics or any science related classes they explain only in present simple tense why because present simple means no time so that is the third thing to take into consideration so you must make sure what tends to use so I'm going to explain it again. First thing, you need to understand the question. Second, you need to identify whether it is comparative or trend or both. Third is you need to decide whether you should write in present simple or other tense. And if it's comparison, you have to write only present tense. Not any other tense is acceptable. Now, Let's have a look how to organize the entire structure. So I'm going to show you one um, method, but there could be some variation. So when it comes to introduction, you have to introduce both charts. So you should say something about the first bar chart and the pie chart as well. So obvious introduction is going to be the, um, the pie charts illustrate reasons for traveling and uh, the pie chart illustrates the main problems of traveling. Okay, but uh, in your case, uh, it's not going to be that hard. You shouldn't, you shouldn't spend more time because you will have a rubric. But in this um, video course, I haven't shown any rubric just to test your understanding of the question. So in the real exam, you will not have a, such a problem you will be given the rubric. You just need to paraphrase the rubric and be done with it. Okay, it shouldn't take uh, more than three minutes for that. And then when it comes to an overview, you have to write a double overview. So, like, you have to say something general statement about first bar chart, or first whatever the chart it is, the diagram is it, and then uh, the second chart as well. So the combination should be written. So as an overall, we will discuss it later, but you have to say something general about the bar chart and pie chart as well. So we have done with overview and introduction. What should be the next? Well, there are many types of the many methods. Some people prefer writing next body part one about only writing about the main critical features, means uh, like uh, key features only uh, of the first chart, a uh, first uh, part of the body, while the second uh, should be allocated to the less important details. But make sure the body should include all the details and data. Okay? But overview does not require writing too much data, because it's an overview, it's just giving big picture. So ideally, I don't recommend you to give too much data in writing overview, because it's just giving you big picture. And at the same time, you have to give 
the whatever you written in overview you should give more details when you're writing body parts especially body part one or there's another alternative I'm going to show you is maybe you just select about bar chart first at the first paragraph after overview and the pie chart separately this is, is also this method is, is also okay so it's up to you whichever method you use because both of it looks coherent so I'll repeat again there are two methods first is you just uh, for the first body part you have to write only the key features with the data with the details and second part of the body you have to give um, a small a small not really important details okay and but it's going to be about both charts or second approach which is shown in the screen like you just divide into two it's just writing with there's a two diagram is first you talk about first diagram the second diagram as a second body part and uh, you can make some comparison if it's necessary while writing the body part one or two all right now that is the the general understanding about the question now let's have a look about selecting the key feature so again we're going to looking the same question so here's the question for you so you can pause your screen and can you identify few key features like it could be like um, three or four that would be sufficient what are the key features that you can include so you can pause your screen and write down on your paper and note and then compare your answers with the screen Okay, now I'm going to show you the the key features, possible key features. So first is work is the major reason. So if you look at these work among the reasons, it is 49%. It's almost 50%. So it's almost half uh, among the reasons. So like it, it means like most most of the people uh, travel for the sake of work. Okay. Now second key feature is six main issues for traveling yeah there are six main issues given below this is just why it's a fee key feature because there could be many other reasons as well but these are the one which are the most critical and more like mainly considerable one okay now next is the price is the biggest issue so among the six main issues the price is the the biggest one and if you look at this in the in the the illustration it shows 36 percent which is comparatively or relatively speaking quite high than others and then it's going to be space is the smallest problem yeah space if you look at the space for pedestrians is a six percent and visiting friend is the least important reason so now we come back again the bar chart and the least important is visiting friends so basically the general rule is when it's only comparison you should say which is the highest and which is the lowest which is the most important to mention which is the least important to mention that is the thing that you need to focus it's if it's just comparison and there is no timeline is given all right now I think uh, that's enough for you to get the grasp of the main idea how to select the key features but now let's move on to how to write an overview so let's begin with overview so in this time I'm going to ask you again question so there are key features already points are already given on the left side work is a major reason first second is the six main issues for traveling is the second key feature three cost of traveling is the biggest setback now on the right there is a sample written but you need to fill the gaps with the key feature statements on the left so again pause your screen and write on your own and then compare your answer with the shown answer which I'm going to do now so the answer is so this is the one way of saying from overall perspective what stands apart from the rest is that work is the major reason and there are six main issues for traveling in addition costs of traveling is the biggest setback 
Okay, you might argue, so one, two, three was the main order. So it could be another alternative as well, like three, two, one. So you can write third one as a major reason as well. Like, in other words, from overall perspective, what stands apart from the rest is that cost for travel is the biggest setback. So we said third as a first. And then and there are six main issues of traveling. And in addition, work is the major reason. So both first and third is the critical key feature so you can play around. But what is the key lesson from here is you just need to learn these keywords, key phrases. So these phrases are helpful to link ideas. So this is the whole statement could be a linking word, like linking device. From moral perspective, what stand apart from the rest is that. This is the phrase you can learn by heart and you can literally apply to any charts or tables and graph related questions. And it's so universal and versatile. And in addition, is also a versatile linking device because you can use it when you want to give an extra information about anything, no matter what. You can also use this in your writing task two essay as well. So this uh, writing, so in this uh, section, I just in, I wanted to show you how to organize your answers by using linking words. But if you want to know more detail about how to select the key features for writing an overview, please watch the previous videos. You can have a full information about that. All right. I hope that's fine and sufficient for you to uh, understand the graph, the meaning of the multiple chart series. So, guys, uh, one more thing I should recommend you. The whole video series are connected with each other. So, it's if you have some misunderstanding, if you don't know how to write the body parts, and if you have no idea how to, if you have difficulties writing uh, certain parts and uh, of charts, please refer to all other videos because there are many other videos available and they all link to each other and they all reinforce each other. So, my recommendation is you should watch all the video series to grasp the main general idea and to understand fully the whole chart series. Now, what is next? So, I hope you understand something in this video course or tutorial. Now, here's the link I'm going to give you. So, if you want to improve your vocabulary of writing task one, charts uh, the, about the charts and graphs so uh, you should you, you could visit the vocabulary on the quizlet account which is my account here is given so find this account and you can send me a request once you join you can practice a lot of vocabulary it's a lot of fun and there are a lot of words available for you to revise and then we have got an online classroom most of you are already in this platform Try to do all the assignments and exercises and given in Google Classroom platform where you can do a lot of exercises and improve your writing skills. And finally, do have a channel in Telegram which is out there where you can improve daily your general English skills. And in this channel I will be uploading a um, variety of listening and speaking and tips about the exam. So these are the things are support material for you to to get better in your IELTS general IELTS skills. So that's all for this video course and if you have any questions please feel free to write a comment below. I do appreciate your support and I try to make some more videos if you have some problems with certain features. So thank you very much and enjoy your learning.